Hi, Todd Vandenberg here with Vandenberg Capital Management and another Uncommon Sense update. So here we sit, uh, half of the year is gone. Um, we've had some pretty amazing volatility in the markets, both up and down. Uh, the month of uh, June finished up in a really positive way. Uh, everybody should be pretty happy with uh, how you know June turned out, but we had to sort of suffer through May in order to get to June because May was, was no good. But uh, you know, long story short is, you know, volatility is what it is. It's the new normal. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about today. What I wanted to talk about today was something I'm not going to talk about. Um, sadly, the thing that was pressing on my mind got trumped by, no pun intended, uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman Powell speaking today in front of Congress and sort of making a case for why maybe possibly there might be an interest rate cut coming in the next several weeks, maybe. And, and I, I just got to say, I am completely puzzled by why the Federal Reserve thinks that lowering interest rates from where they are now is going to generate economic activity. Because if you think about it, with interest rates where they are right now, does, does anybody watching this, this message know of any human being who says, you know, I'm not going to buy a car because interest rates are too high? It, if you can't afford a car with interest rates where they are today, you can't afford a car. How about a house? Interest rates right now, somebody just told me you can get a 30-year mortgage for like 3.6-ish percent, 3.65. I mean, holy moly, that is the, one of the lowest interest rates ever. And do we really know anybody who, if the banks lower it a quarter of a point, that that's going to be the thing that makes them buy a house? And the answer again to that is no. So these interest rates, if they lower them, typically when the Fed lowers interest rates, they're trying to generate economic activity. And by lowering interest rates, in theory, it makes you know, money easier to get. So people will get loans and, and then they'll spend that money on stuff. But again, if we think about who do we know who's not doing something because interest rates are too high. So I'm, again, I'm puzzled by what the Federal Reserve is doing specifically because there's other things that they could be doing that I think would be having a greater effect. And I'm going to talk about one quickly right now. So we all remember back in the days of quantitative easing. You know, the Fed was trying to protect us from the, the financial crisis. So they were printing money uh, like it was going out of style. And they said that they were going to take that money and get it to the banks so that the banks could put it in the economy. And as these charts show that I'm about to, to show you here in a second, the, the, the indicator that tells you how much money is in the economy is called the M2. And when you look at the M2, in spite of the trillions of dollars that the Federal Reserve printed, the M2 went up pretty steadily. In fact, when you actually look at it compared to the population, the sort of working age population in the United States, those two charts look pretty correlated that, you know, as there's more people working, we have more money in, in the economy, go figure. So now I'm going to overlay uh, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. This is all that quantitative easing money that they printed on top of the M2. And what we see is there was a huge spike starting in uh, 2008. And, and that spike continued up for quite a while. But that spike did not reflect itself in the M2, in the money supply. So then the question becomes, where did that money go? So now I'm going to add a new line to this chart, and that line is excess reserves held at the Federal Reserve. So what that means is, you know, the banks are required to keep a certain amount of money on deposit at the Fed, and any money in excess of what they're legally required to keep, that's called excess reserves. Now, historically, prior to the, the financial crisis, banks almost never kept anything at the Fed outside of what they were required to keep because they would take the money that they weren't required to keep at the Fed and they'd lend it out and try to make a profit. Well, something happened in March of 2009 and that's when you see the, the, the excess reserves at the Fed start to spike. Because what happened is, is the Fed printed all this money with the thought that it would get into the economy, 
which we, again, we can see from the M2, it didn't. And all of a sudden, that money shows up as excess reserves back at the Fed. And the reason for that is the Federal Reserve has been paying the banks interest on those deposits, and they never paid them interest on deposits prior to March of 2009. So what could the Fed be doing to try to increase economic activity if I believe that interest rate lowering is not the answer? I don't know. Let's not pay interest to the banks on excess money they keep at the Fed. Because what's a bank going to do? I mean, there's a trillion and a half dollars sitting at the Fed that's more than what the Fed wants them to keep. What's a bank going to do? Is it just going to keep it there and earn nothing? I would say no. I would think that more likely the banks bring that back into circulation and actually try to lend it out and make a little money, and that generates economic activity. Now, there was one thing that uh, Chairman Powell said at today's hearings that really puzzled me because, I, again, I'd never heard any Fed chairperson say anything like this. And he said that paying interest on excess reserves is one of their primary tools for improving or controlling uh, economic activity in the United States. And I was just stunned by that because the Federal Reserve it doesn't make money, really. It doesn't have money. So the interest that it's paying on that, on, on the money that it gets from the banks, you know, where, where do people think that comes from? It's not coming from the Treasury. And, and that's just, it, 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 it potentially hurts our currency. So I was really surprised to see Chairman Powell talk about why paying banks interest on excess reserves was really important to them because in the history of the Federal Reserve, they'd never done it. They'd always found a way to get out of a recession or to slow down a speeding economy without paying interest and giving, giving the banks basically profit at no risk. So a lot of complicated material to cover there, but um, the long and short of it is that even if the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates coming up here in the next few weeks or the coming months, we don't think it's going to really have a material impact on, on the economy. And, and therefore, you know, the, the, the economy that we have is the economy that we're likely to see through the balance of the year. And that economy is a pretty strong one. We had GDP growth rate in the first quarter at 3.1%. Uh, the new jobs number came out uh, last week at like 224,000, I think it was. New jobs were added. That was uh, following up on May's number where only 75,000 were added. So, you know, with 224,000 added in the month of June, you know, that looked pre looks pretty good for the economy. The unemployment rate did tick up from 3.6 to 3.7%, but that's primarily because of the, the labor force participation rate improved because a bunch of people who hadn't been working came back into the workforce. Again, a positive sign for the economy. We also have over 7 million unfilled jobs in the U.S. So, you know, employers keep adding new jobs in spite of the fact that they have plenty of outstanding jobs, which just says that there's a hunger for uh, employees and more employees means more spending. More spending means better economic activity. We are not anywhere near a recession, I guess is what I'm saying. So apologize for the long-winded update, but a lot going on these days. If anybody has any questions about this or their portfolios or whether they're well positioned for any potential interest rate increase or decrease, give us a call. We'd be happy to help. Otherwise, that was your update. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a like, give us a share, and I'll be back next week with another Uncommon Sense update. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to be the first to hear of more Uncommon Sense updates like these, please click the subscribe button below. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again.